You made it. Welcome back, everybody. We have a lot to go over here with the new Warriors Den showcasing new hero. There's some a lot of adjustment changes and uh, big news. We are getting two new map variations, so that'll be pretty sick for all of us to enjoy because it's the last thing that we've been wanting for the very long time. So I'm really stoked that we're getting that, and I'm sure you guys all are as well. So let me know in the comments what maps they sh we should be doing because I don't know. They didn't tell us which maps that we're going to do, but I would love a canopy one. I love the Samurai one and the Viking Village. Those ones are freaking amazing. The design of them is just beautiful all around, and I hope to see them in the future. So the new hero will be coming on February 1st. The armor variations that we'll be showcasing as well will be on the same day. And of course, we have the Hero Fest with Warmonger's new execution. It's fantastic. I love it. I think I'll say like 10 out of 10. The Hero Fest is going to be Black Prior and Afira, so they'll come later on. But be excited for that. A lot of good things coming for your favorite characters. I can tell you that much. But let's just go ahead and get started and talk about the important things. First of all, let's go over something really quickly. Afira and Shinobi nerfs. Now, this is mostly just damage nerfs. Damage nerfs all around. So Afira's side light openers and finishers which have the crushing counter properties you'd always see them you know external you or target swap those so that you get hit by them they have really good range on live but now in next week they're going to nerf those hitboxes significantly and it's going to make your less oppressive when it comes to light attacks and shit that utilize you know heavies or use your brain a little bit more the top heavy opener also deals less damage 25 damage from 27 pretty big nerf and I, they kind of did that to compensate for her left red moon, which is her left side heavy finisher, within landing the bash and the chain kick. So that left heavy, that wall splats, is now going to deal 10 instead of 16. So when she lands that 25 damage top heavy, it's a lot less damage. Personally, these changes aren't going to change how she plays. She'll still be a lot stronger when it comes to parry punishes than most of the cast. And she'll still do quite a bit of damage and get that mix-up potential. Shinobi, also kind of the same changes where the heavy openers now deal 22 damage down from 24. So it's 24 plus an additional 4 damage with a flight follow-up, which most people will be doing anyways. And you don't really want to not be doing that. So he had the highest guard break damage in the entire game. Now it's nerfed, so it's going to be 22 plus 4, which is 26, in line with a lot of the other characters. A little bit over uh, above average, but still very strong for an assassin. The light openers also deal 12, down from 14, and the teleport now deals 20 damage, down from 24. So all in all, these are good changes for the character when it comes to just straightforward things, but they still need to tweak some of these characters because they are pretty overtuned, and unfortunately there's no Orochi nerfs to the character yet, and uh, we'll be waiting for that in the future when they deal with the rest of the stuff, because they're working on a lot of things, a lot of armor variations, executions, uh, new heroes, blah blah blah, all that good stuff. So this is pretty good for now, but let's just wait for more information. Now let's talk about the new character, Katla, or the Vangarian hero. It's going to be a wild, wild character. A lot of fun, I'm sure a lot of people are going to like this character just because of the fashion. It's top job. I'll be showing you guys the fashion in the background. But I'll quickly go over all of her movesets and what you guys need to be looking out for when you do fight her next week. So, first of all, Crush Encounter Lights on all of her light attacks. She has two chain light attacks, and you're going to be able to Crush Encounter all that just like Afira. So really good defensively, enhanced lights, and the unblockable finisher, which is coming from all three sides, will pin and will enter a chain bash that is 400 ms. Okay, the bash is a headbutt and it's going to be fully unreactable, so you have to make a read on dodging that and buffering that freaking space bar or A button or X button for some players, I think. I'm actually not sure. It depends on what you guys have used for your controller setup, but this is going to be a fast bash, and then the unblockable heavy is going to deal around 27 damage, so it also pins for really good for ganking. The zone is going to be about 600 ms, it seems, and it's going to be a chain starter, of course. Pretty straightforward so far. Kind of feels like a warlord or a black prior type character, but there's definitely more to the character. He does have a forward bash, which guarantees a light and enters your mix-up. The dodge attack, and she also does have a dodge attack. Pretty silly for a heavy character, but that's just how it be sometimes. What's also neat is that her forward dodge light has crushing counter properties, so pretty cool. A little bit faster version of Black Prior, most likely better. So she has a lot of defensive options and kind of a crushing counter machine when used effectively. The funny thing is, is that this character has no hyper armor given all of the plate armor on her. Neutral and chain offense, at least. She got chain mill, she got plate armor and draconian scales or something like that. It's pretty crazy, and it's a little bit confusing to me. It kind of feels like a hybrid of sorts, but her moveset feels really slow, or looks really slow. It's satisfying to land her heavies, 
So it kind of balances out, but at the same time, not having hyper armor is a good thing because it makes the character require a little bit more brain power. So this character is going to be like Armusha, where you press it and it holds the all guard for like a second, and whoever hits it, you can do a bunch of different moves. Whether you can be a light attack, a zone that has hyper armor, so that's the one, that's the only part of the attack of this character that has hyper armor, you can do it unblockable. Heavy attack from all sides, so determining whether you want to hit people on the left or right side and cleave through to make yourself anti-gank better and stall better to deal damage as much as possible. Very helpful, and this also pins and enters your chain mix-up once again. What's also neat about this full block is that you can decide to delay it ever so slightly if there is another person that's going to attack you. You can't do it indefinitely like Warlord, but you can delay it ever so slightly so that you can utilize that unblockable attack. And I think the most important thing about this All Guard is that you can use it to cancel your recoveries and it's pretty insane. And when you get hit by two attacks, it will hit the person that you're targeting and that will be really helpful because sometimes you don't want to be targeting the person that just hit you beforehand. You want to be targeting someone that you want to kill off or finish off quickly. That's a neat addition and the animation just looks, it looks top tier. The way you block on the left and right side in front of you, oh, they, they, did, they did a splendid job here. So when I say it's like Black Pryor and Armisha, they're very, very similar. They're just put together and this can be a good thing. It's not necessarily going to be a bad thing, but in solo queue you might have a rough time. So you got to be careful when you're trying to throw heavies that aren't unblockables. He'll be ready for that and with the feats that I'm going to go over, it's going to be redonkulous, I'll tell you that much. Another cool thing, which is probably the coolest thing about this character that I really, really like, it might be overpowered, but I don't think it's going to be, is that when someone does hit your guard, you can do a bash that will wall splat them so you can land a top heavy for lots of damage. The animation looks so satisfying. This character, I don't think he has any reused animation at all and that's freaking fantastic. I love it. One of my mains, I'm sure, and it's going to be so satisfying to land this because I do want a full block character, but of course I don't want it after every single move, like cancelable and everything. No thank you, I'd rather go back to my old Armisha, light heavy faint, and then go for a full block. You know me guys. But that's pretty much it for the character itself, like the design of it. It's fairly simple, full block this, crush encounter that, and unblockable this for a pin to set up ganks and stuff like that. And surprisingly, of course, there's no hyper armor except within the all block zone attack that is confirmed. And it's pretty cool. I don't think he's going to be too powerful in duels, but he's going to be pretty sick in Dominion because I'm going to go over the feats and it will surprise you and shocketh you, boys. All right, so the first feat, basically every time someone hits your all guard, the, the person right next to you, your teammates, will heal about 10, 11, or 12 HP, as you can see here. This is pretty strong for a tier 1. Granted, it doesn't heal you, but you'll have a bunch of other feats to help you stay alive with defensive perks such as Bastion, Vegetable Barrier, and Last Stand, I'm assuming, because it is a heavy, so you get those perks. And of course, your tier 2, which I'll be talking about, gives you a uh, damage reduction when you get uh, superior blocks or full blocks. So with this, you can heal your teammates. It looks about like 10 or 11 HP or so, and that's pretty strong for a tier 1. And being a Paladin of sorts, or basically Brigitte from Overwatch, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you you do feel like a paladin. You feel like a paladin more so than a griffin. And those both those characters are pretty strong in Dominion right now. But I still think this is pretty awesome for a feat. Might be a little bit overtuned, but we'll see. So the tier 2 is pretty neat too. So every time you get a crush encounter, you get a little bit of a defense buff, and that's pretty sick. It's also off of a full block, so really handy for your entire kit. Basically, it's righteous deflection, but with those two quirks. She does have a lot of crush encounters, so this will help him quite a bit. Pretty straightforward and acts as a really good tank when it comes to anti-ganking and stalling. The tier 3, every time you land a finisher heavy unblockable, it has an AoE effect of a damage buff. So I think that's pretty neat. I want to see how strong it is and how helpful it is. It plays out in team fights. Jing Jun has this feat for a tier 1 already, and it's not too shabby. It's pretty strong. So having this as a tier 3, hopefully the damage values are going to be very helpful. The tier 4, you'll basically throw a Doom Banner and a small Spear Storm in AoE. It's really sick. I don't know if it's going to be super strong compared to maybe Spear Storm itself or Fire Flask, but with the AoE effect in combination with like someone's Fire Flask or something like that, I think that'd be very strong. And the area denial will be pretty helpful in team fights. Pretty unique if you ask me, putting two feats together, making them do a little bit less damage, but having more utility at the end, pretty shagadelic. And that's basically all of the information for the new character. What do you guys think? She seems... You know, pretty tanky, pretty strong, doesn't seem too overpowered, except for her feats maybe. Uh, the character, we'll have to wait and see how strong she's going to be. I'll probably rate her like at least an A tier, because she has a lot of 
tools already, defensive crushing counters, really good full block, unblockables that pin, a fast chain headbutt, that's 400 MS. But this is all just speculation. Once we learn the animations, the timings of her attacks, everyone's gonna have a rough time fighting her the first time because, you know, she's new. She's new. So she'll be stopping rank lobbies for a little bit until <laughs> we get used to her. But at the end of the day, I think the character is gonna be a cool addition to the roster. Doesn't seem super overpowered, at least compared to Magi or Afira. Nothing seems too glaring. Kind of just feels like a slightly, maybe the same thing as like a Warlord and Armusha mixed together without, of course, the soft faints from Armusha and the hyper armor from Warlord. They're just kind of like a hybrid. And I'm surprised this character is even a hybrid. It feels like a hybrid, honestly. I thought we were going to get a Vanguard character, but we got like a heavy slash hybrid character, which is basically a hybrid because there's no hyper armor and most heavy characters in this game have hyper armor, at least neutral hyper armor. Shigoki, Warlord, Jang Jun, both those characters have hyper armor on their heavy attack. So really surprising and maybe they just were just, maybe they're just like, eh, this here is a hybrid. People are getting sick of hybrids. Let's just say it's a heavy character, but she does move pretty satisfying and her gear is just, ugh. Dude, her gear is amazing. Like, I cannot stress how well the art team actually did. Her shields are crazy. They have so much jewels, man. They're I've been bejeweled. I have been bejeweled. The shields are crazy. Every single, sh the high level shields, the legendary ones, they have like green, red, purple jewels. It's freaking insane. Man, these Var Varangian guard characters must be, uh, barbarians must have been rich as heck getting paid left and right back in the old days, man. You guys are telling me so much about the lore in my last video, and I'm really thankful for that. I learned quite a bit from you guys, so I appreciate you guys letting me know that. Be sure to let me know more about the character for Caddy or Cat. I'm just gonna call her Cat, guys. I'm gonna call her Cat, and it's more comfortable for me when I'm doing callouts. I don't want to go like Varan Varangar. It's it's the Varangarian. It's or Varanga or Vara. You know, I just want to be like it's Caddy or it's Cat because that's kind of cute too. Because you got you know she got those beautiful eyes. You know she got those eyes. You know those those eyes. You guys know what I'm talking about boys know but overall i'm pretty happy with this warriors stream we got to see havoc up there so that was pretty freaking sick hope you guys enjoyed some of his fights he was cooking out there i'll tell you that much and marco yolo was also out there too that boy was also cooking with hito cutie of course and we all know hito cutie is the best just kidding we all hate her i know you guys do but overall i'm happy and uh the new maps that are coming out i'm super stoked please be canopy please be viking village and please be the samurai, um, the samurai one, the forest one. That one is so beautiful. I cannot tell you, man. I wish I, I would play. Elimination on that map is so fun. I just hope there's not as much ledges. They have to basically baby-proof, quote-unquote, the map for a lot of players. Because, of course, you know, we don't want to get ledged all the damn time. Some ledges are okay, but not all of them. What do you guys think of the Warriors Den? And what do you guys think of the new hero, Katla? Hope you guys enjoyed the stream on YouTube. Thank you so much for coming out there, guys. I really do appreciate that. You guys are the goats. Let me know if you guys were there in the comment section down below. And the Twitch viewers, I love you guys. Be seeing you guys really soon. And I'll be streaming in a couple days for you all. Check the notification bell if you guys want, want to see me when I go live. And of course, join the Discord of when I go live and just, you know, hang out with the community. Always a damn good time. A damn good time. This is a damn good video, I'll tell you what. Thank you so much for watching every booty. See you guys in the battlefield. Bye-bye. See you later.